Hello everyone, you made it to part two. Did you actually watch part one of my tips and tricks for the Pennsylvania Keystone exams? If you haven't, try to find my part one. Uh, we're going to continue on with showing some tips and tricks, uh, how to use a calculator that you can use a calculator to help you understand some of these problems. Okay, here we have a problem involving the least common multiple. Uh, we need to find the least common multiple of 36 and 60, and you could do this on paper, or you can ask the calculator to find the least common multiple of 36 and 60. To do that, you hit the math key, go over to the second column. It's going to be option 8, the least common multiple. So I'm going to hit enter, and I'm going to type in the first number, and then a comma. Above the 7, you'll see the comma, and then 60 hit enter you're gonna see it's 180 now it's 180 as far as the numbers as far as variables you're gonna use every variable that you see and it's gonna be the highest exponent that you see so in this case I have a u squared that I'm gonna use then I'm gonna have a v cubed and a w squared so looking at this multiple choice uh, question we would go with option C so C is the correct answer Okay, my next example is the greatest common factor, GCF. So again, you should be able to do this without a calculator. You're looking for the largest number that divides evenly into a 42 and 30. But let's say on the keystones, they have really huge, outrageous numbers, and you want to find the greatest common factor. Uh, once again, you're going to hit the math key, second column. This time, it's going to be option 9. So I'm going to hit uh, Enter, and I'm going to type in the 42 comma and 30 and when I hit enter I'm gonna see that the greatest common factor is a 6. 6 divides evenly into 42 and 30. And again with multiple choice it's pretty easy to be able to pick out your GCF but as far as variables this time I'm only gonna use letters that I have in common variables that I have in common with both terms and I have to take the smallest exponent I can only factor out the smallest exponent that we see so in this case I can only factor out an x squared I can only factor out a y because I have a y and a y cubed I can only factor out the y and then z squared and z to the fourth I can only factor out a z squared so when you're looking at this answer it would be B Okay, here's a relatively easy evaluation problem where they give me the value of my variable and we have some absolute value. Just want to quickly show you where you can find the absolute value on the calculator. Uh, again, this problem can easily be done without a calculator, but as a backup, I can do 5, then I see times the absolute value. So if you hit math and then push over, you're going to see option 1, ABS. Now, some of you will have bars on your calculator. Uh, this one I have to use parentheses, and I'm going to type in 8 minus the value of n is 16. For me, I have to close my parentheses. If you have a calculator that actually shows the absolute value bars, you're going to push away so that you're no longer inside the absolute value. Then I see minus, and then absolute value of negative 13. Yeah, I'll type it in, but you should know the absolute value of negative 13 is a 13. But let's type it in, go over to the second column, option 1. I'm going to type in negative 13, and I'm going to close my parentheses. And I'm going to hit Enter, and I'm going to see that my answer is 27. Okay, here's another problem involving evaluating a real simple problem. Uh, just to make sure that you understand where your exponent key is, I have 16 times 4 raised to the negative 1 power. And again, the calculator understands order of operations. It understands PEMDAS. It knows it needs to take this 4, raise it to negative 1. 4 raised to negative 1 is really 1 fourth. 16 times 1 fourth is 4. And you can see that when I hit uh, enter here. So again, another easy problem that can easily be done without a calculator. But you can use a calculator just as a backup to check your calculations. Uh, same thing here with this problem. Uh, Again, we should understand negative exponents, cross a line, change a sign. So really, there's going to be 1 over 10 to the fourth power. But here's one way, in case you forget this, it's raised to negative 4. The calculator is going to give us a goofy decimal answer. Okay, It's in scientific notation. It's really 0 .0001. But, you know, and you can say, okay, let me see if I can do that as a fraction. 
Now, the calculator will, is unable to put that decimal as a fraction. So if you w didn't understand this answer, you would go through these choices. And when you get to D, you type in 1 divided by 10 raised to the fourth. You're going to see that we get that exact same value. So they're equivalent. So that you're going to know that 10 raised to negative 4 is equivalent to 1 over 10 to the fourth. So again, if you freak out about negative exponents, uh, you can double check them in a calculator, especially dealing with numbers. Okay, here's one more evaluation problem. I'm going to type in exactly what I see. I see 3 times my R value, which is 4, raised to the second power, T is equal to 2. I'm going to close the parentheses, and that whole thing is going to be raised to negative 1 power. So when I do that, I get a goofy decimal answer, which we can see if the calculator can convert this into a fraction by hitting math, enter, enter, and I can see my answer is B, 1 over 48. Okay, this next example, we're dealing with a trinomial times a binomial. And ideally, on the keystone, if you see a problem where you have to simplify, I really want you to know how to work the problem out on paper. We uh, talked about this box method, or you could distribute twice. You distribute the x, distribute the negative 5, and you're going to get the correct answer. Now, as a way to double check, this works for any simplification problem. You can't just type the problem in at the blank screen. You can't, the calculator can't just automatically uh, simplify a polynomial. But what you can do is go to the y equals screen. And in the y equals screen, I typed in the original problem. So you can see right here, I typed it. Now make sure you type in exactly how you see it. I have this trinomial times the binomial in parentheses. And then I can go through these choices. And I know A is my answer. I did the work over here. I combine like terms. Negative 25x squared minus 1x squared is a negative 26x squared. The 5x minus 12x, that combines together. These are like terms. That gives you the negative 7x. But if I type in the original and what I believe my answer is, I can confirm by going to the table. So when I go second graph, I can see no matter what we replace the x with, no matter what value x is replaced with, you're going to see the original problem, y sub 1. You have an outcome of negative 70. And so is my answer, my choice A. I get the same outcome. This has to work out. They're supposed to be equivalent. It's just a simpler version of the problem. And this can be done in case you're not quite sure of an answer. We should be able to check at the y equals screen that the original problem and your answer needs to produce the same outcomes. They are equivalent. Okay, we have another simplify the expression. Here we're squaring a binomial, which you should know is the binomial times itself. You use FOIL. You can square double square if you know how to do that. Uh, box method. But you can see, you know, this is how you do the outers and inners. We'll add up to 4x. You can see my answer. To verify this on the calculator if you needed to, if you have a hard time finding the correct answer, go to the y equals screen, type in the original problem, and then underneath in y sub 2, I can type in what I believe the answer is, and I know this is correct. I did all the correct work. To confirm, I go to my table, and I can see no matter what my x value is, I'm getting the same outcome for both the original and my simplified answer. Here's another problem that's very easy to do on paper. We have a trinomial minus another trinomial. When you subtract the polynomial, you're really adding its opposite. So I show all the work. But again, this even this problem could be confirmed on a calculator by going to the y equals screen. We have the original problem. Use parentheses. Type in exactly what you see. Compare it to what I believe my answer is, D. When I go to my table, I'm going to confirm that all my outcomes are the same for both the original and my simplified version. Okay, this next problem involves factoring. And ideally, again, we should know how to factor. We should know that with my original problem, this trinomial, I need to factor out a 9x first. The GCF is a 9x. 9x is in common with all three terms. So this is the first step to factor out a 9x. And it's, it's, it's multiple choice. I can roll out A and I can roll out D right away. They, they, you need to factor out a 9x. 
Now, we're not finished. We still have a trinomial that can be uh, factored even farther. So, again, we should know that if C is positive, the signs have to be the same. Uh, in this case, they both have to be negative because my outers and inners have to add up to negative 8. So just to confirm, I can see that my answer has to be B. C is not going to work. But just once again, if you need to, just as a backup, go to the Y equals screen. I typed in my original problem that needed to be factored, and I typed in my fully factored answer. Now, you just have to be careful here that you pick the one that's fully factored. And when you go to your table, you're going to see that we confirmed. If you would type in C in the Y sub 2, your outcomes will not be the same. So I know my original problem and choice B, they're equivalent. Okay, and again, this is just as a backup. We, you can feel confident if you had a factor right away and you see the answer, you can just you automatically can select your choice. But just as a backup, a way to confirm, just because you're gonna have plenty of time to answer the questions on the keystones, mod one and mod two. So I want to just make sure that you have plenty of ways to double and recheck your answers. Here's another example, a relatively easy trinomial to factor. You can see that the signs have to be the same. I need to get, uh, my last has to multiply together to give me a positive 25, and yet the outers and inners need to add up to a negative 10x. So my answer is A, but once again, just as a backup, I can go to the Y equals screen, I can type in the original problem, type in what I believe my answer is, and then just confirm it by going to the table both columns are the same. Okay, here we have a problem that is difficult for quite a few students where you're supposed to simplify an irrational expression and you can only cancel out factors. So our job is to factor the numerator, factor the denominator, and then cancel out factors. So you can see here how I factored out a 2 from the numerator and I could still factor more because I have a perfect square minus a perfect square, difference of perfect squares x plus 2, x minus 2. I factor the trinomial, everything's positive. Uh, my last has to multiply together to give me 8. Outers and inners have to add up to 6, so I'm, I factored correctly. And then I canceled out a common, my common factor. I can cancel out the x plus 2 uh, in the top and the x plus 2 that's a factor in the bottom. And I'm left with, when after I distribute in the numerator, a 2x minus 4 all over and x plus 4. So that's the answer, which matches up with letter D. But to confirm this on a calculator, if you needed to, I go to the Y equals screen. Now make sure you realize that you need to put parentheses. Calculator is not going to know that a 2X squared minus 8 is in the numerator unless you place it in parentheses. And it's not going to know that you're dividing by the trinomial unless it's in parentheses. So I typed the original problem. I typed in my answer. And I can see when I go to my table, that my outcomes are the same. And remember, where you get an error, you cannot divide by zero. So our domain is all real numbers except for a negative four and negative two. And on the keystone, you may see the X and the does not equal. It'll let you know that negative four cannot be an input, negative two cannot be an input. But any other X values, you're gonna see the original problem and my answer producing the same outcomes.